In theory, losing weight is easy. Simply eat less calories than you burn every day. This type of dieting is called calories in, calories out. Now, I've personally been dieting this way for years and I've seen results as well as maintained results. And I personally love using the Apple Watch to get an idea of how many calories I'm burning every single day. And then I'll track the food with an app called My Fitness Pal to get an idea of how many calories I'm eating every single day. And again, I can create that calories in versus calories out. Okay, cool. What's the problem with all of this? Well, the longer I've dieted this way, the more I've found myself reaching for those more convenient foods. You see, if you're only focused on hitting your daily protein goals as well as your total caloric limit for the day, the chances of you reaching for these convenient processed foods increases. And herein lies the danger. You go, well, I hit my protein goals and I got a bunch of calories left over for the day. So you start to justify eating less quality calories that over the long term may not be the most beneficial for your body and could potentially create a situation where you're deficient in some micronutrients. On top of that, if I had a high energy expenditure day, let's say according to my Apple Watch, my move goal was like 1500. That would mean I could easily eat over 3000 calories and that's just in a single day. So if that was the case, what kind of foods do you think I'd be reaching for? Honestly, still a lot of good quality foods, but also a good amount of some of that processed, easy to eat food. So a few weeks ago, I decided to take a closer look at my diet and make a few changes. So one of the biggest things I've removed from my diet is pretty much all protein bars or packaged nutrition bars because so many of these bars have a bunch of processed ingredients in them. And while they are a convenient way to get a quick 20 grams of protein, ultimately long-term, I shouldn't be eating these every single day. Additionally, with a lot of these processed bars and processed foods, a lot of them have seed oils, canola oil, vegetable oil, and all of these oils are not good for you. They're very, very inflammatory. And over the long term, it's not something you want to be putting in your body. And I don't eat a ton of sugar as it is, but I've really been even more conscientious of how much refined sugar that is in any of these things. And especially when you get into that whole world of processed foods, you can find quite a bit of refined sugar. So I've just made sure that that is pretty much completely eliminated from the diet. So these are the main things that I've simply pulled from my diet. And I've found that one of the best ways to just adhere to not eat these things, again, as convenient as they are sometimes, is I just stopped buying them. If a food that you're trying not to eat is just not in your house, guess what? You're not going to eat it. It's a simple strategy, but it's 100% effective. Now, what I want you to keep in mind here is a lot of foods you buy at the store are going to come in some kind of packaging. That doesn't necessarily make it innately bad. I'm not saying go be a farmer and harvest everything from scratch and raise your own cattle and chickens and eggs and don't do that unless you want to, then, then go be a farmer, that's fine. But what I am saying here is that when you are shopping for foods, quick before you buy it, take a look at the packaging and look at the ingredients list. And you want to aim for those whole food, single food, or maybe just a handful of ingredients listed on that packaging. But once that list really starts to get long and you start to see sunflower oil, canola oil, like phosphoric acid, random chemicals that they're putting in there, just don't buy it. This is pretty simple here, but if you just just take that little extra time to do that. It's going to really, really help clean up your diet. So in terms of protein, I'm still doing plenty of chicken breast, egg whites as well. I'm loving 93.7 lean ground beef as well as ribeye steak. I do make sure my meats are organic and grass fed as well as my chicken is also organic. I know this is somewhat of a luxury, but if you're able to do this, I would definitely recommend it. Also, I absolutely love Greek yogurt and I've currently been loving this brand Oikos. It's a fantastic Greek yogurt. There's no added sugar. There's really no BS in it. And I still do allow myself one protein shake but that's just quality, no sugar, whey protein, and a slate. And this helps me still hit my protein goals without just having to constantly be cooking fresh meat because I already am meal prepping chicken so I can have it ready to go for lunches and dinners and that kind of thing. Again, I've cut out all the protein bars, but if I am gonna reach for one, if I'm short on time, I've been loving these protein bars by the brand RX Bar. And if you look at the ingredients on the back of this packaging, they're just single ingredients. There's no BS in it. And I absolutely love 
love these. In terms of carbohydrates, I've been loving purple sweet potatoes. They've got an enormous amount of antioxidants. I dice them, I put a little avocado oil on them, I roast them in the oven, and I make like a few days worth of that, and I'll mix that up with like some ground beef or ground chicken, and that's like a big bowl of yum. A big bowl of yum. Also, I've been enjoying whole grain oats by the brand Ezekiel. It's all, again, very good quality ingredients. No bullshit in there. As well as basmati rice. That's just kind of a bodybuilder or fitness world staple. Easy on your digestion and a great source of carbohydrates. And also, I've been eating plenty of fresh fruit. You know I love blueberries. My wife and I have also been making these teriyaki bowls and I put a bunch of fresh cut pineapple in there, which is freaking amazing. Also, fresh cut vegetables mostly in the form of pico de gallo. So there's Roma tomato in there, jalapeno, serrano pepper, red onion, cilantro. Pretty much every time I have a bowl of meat and potatoes or meat and rice, I'm doing heaping scoops of that. And I get these fresh vegetables. It's a great source of fiber and a ton of micronutrients. I also do like these microwavable vegetable pouches that I found at Sprouts and it's whole food ingredients in there. You just throw it in the microwave and these are nice to throw in when I I have just a big bowl of meat. Um, yeah, I keep saying big bowls of meat. Why does that sound weird? If I am gonna reach for bread, sometimes it's sourdough. Also, I do enjoy tortillas from time to time, but that's few and far between. So that might be one of the exceptions of like the outlier foods there. And then in terms of like sweeteners, I still do allow stevia leaf. I like the Zevia sodas, but I'll limit that to maybe one at night. And this is something I still make sure to moderate and not over consume, but I don't have a massive sweet tooth. So this is just nice to have if I do want something sweet, but don't want the refined sugars. In terms of fats, I get a lot of it from avocado as well as avocado oil, as well as some of the foods that I'm eating will have like coconut oil in them. And then if I'm gonna use butter, it's gonna be real like grass fed butter and also chia seeds, which have really, really good healthy fats. It's also a great source of fiber. Man, I've been obsessed with chia seeds. I eat them every single day. They're fantastic. And in terms of additional supplements, I'm still replenishing my electrolytes. You guys know I love Element. Also, I've recently been taking magnesium L3 and 8, which helps with overall relaxation, helps with sleep and sleeping more deeply. I would really recommend magnesium L3 and 8 been loving it. And I still do ginger shots as well as a scoop of fiber in the morning. And I also drink about five to seven grams of glutamine in the morning. And these supplements just help with digestion. And lastly, I'm still on creatine. So all of these foods have been making up like 90 to 95% of my diet. And hopefully you don't think they're that boring, but <laughs> I'm kind of at this place now where I'm prioritizing the foods that are gonna make me feel and perform and live an amazing life. And not just right now, but for years to come. And I think the sooner that you can consider this and make it the foundational aspect of your diet, the better. It's not just about how you look, but it's also about how you feel. It's about preventing disease. It's about enjoying freaking life. Because I truly believe you can get to this place in your diet where it makes you feel so good every single day. You're sold. You don't wanna eat anything else other than good quality nutrient dense foods. And with how hard I train and how much I do every single day, I have to be on top of it. And then, you know, it's interesting when you actually do end up being like, oh, let me just order some pizza tonight or something. When you have that one night where you order some shitty food, you feel it. You're like, whoa, this is what I used to eat. This feels gross right now. Like you can physically feel the difference between nutrient dense quality foods and that ultra processed bullshit. And it'll be kind of a reminder for you. Like, yeah, that's why I stay away from that. The quicker you can make that switch, and by the way, give yourself some grace in making that switch, but the quicker you can do it, the better, and you're just gonna be a happier, more energized and excited person. Also, another cool thing is I've been able to bulk on this diet. This week I hit over 180 pounds, so I've been putting on some size, which I'm super stoked about, and maybe within the next few months I'll start the cut, but I wanna really get into the comfortable 180s before I consider trimming off some of the fat and seeing where I'm at. So stay tuned for more updates on that. Well, friends, thanks so much for watching this video. Share it with your friends and family, whoever. If you need good music for your videos, go check out moodsounddesign.com. We offer some of the best music for your videos and we're linked in the description. I really do appreciate the ongoing support. Go eat some amazingly nutritious food and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. And can, and can potentially create, and can, and can, and can, and could,
and could potentially, well, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite YouTuber, Brian. And of course, as soon as I start recording, my dogs start barking. It's, it's I freaking love it. I make sure my, and I do make sure my meats are, and I do make sure my meats, and I do make sure my meats are, and I do make sure my meats, so all of, so that's, that's, so all, so all of,